You can now get a 30-day trial to experience The Athletic for free. Visit the link in the description below to try it now. One of the best sporting stories of the COVID-19 era was National League side Wrexham AFC's makeover as FC Hollywood. Rob McElhenney and Ryan Reynolds, the co-owners of the RR McReynolds company, announced its intention to buy Wrexham last November and completed the £2 million transaction in February. McElhenney is a successful actor, writer and producer in the US, and Reynolds is, well, Ryan Reynolds, a wildly famous actor, but also a prosperous entrepreneur. He bought a stake in Aviation Gin, the fastest growing premium gin in the US market in 2018, and sold it to drinks giant Diageo for £440 million last year. He also owns a stake in a mobile phone company and co-founded an advertising agency. But 5,000 miles away from Wrexham is the man who made this happen. Humphrey Kerr is an English comedy writer and actor who went to California in 2013. By 2018, he had appeared in an episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia and had joined McElhenney's production company, which was already working on Mythic Quest, its second comedy hit. A Liverpool fan, he remembers watching their run to the Champions League title and would watch the games at work with McElhenney, a huge sports fan who would tease him for watching such a slow, boring game. But by the time Liverpool had stunned Barcelona with their semi-final resurrection, McElhenney was paying attention. And after being recommended Sunderland Till I Die by Kerr during the first lockdown, he watched the series with his wife. But this wouldn't end with a successful recommendation. He told me, we should do this, we should buy a club and make a documentary, remembers Kerr. Before I really knew it, the conversation had moved on to, who can we buy? Kerr was asked to research which club his boss could buy and came up with a list of half a dozen that met their criteria. A club with history that needed a lift, but had enough fans to make the business work now and in the future. I looked at how many fans regularly turn up, their catchment area, how many come if they're on a cup run, says Kerr. The fact Wrexham were getting 4,500 at the wrong end of the National League proved how loyal their fan base is. And there was also the romantic side of the story in that these fans literally saved the club from rubbish owners in the past. First in 2004, when a former custodian tried to evict them and put the club in administration. It took Wrexham 18 months to exit, but not before they had become the first club to be hit with a 10-point automatic penalty, a sanction that saw them relegated from League One. New owners took the club on in 2006, but by 2011 they had run out of puff and Wrexham were up for sale, with HM Revenue and Customs threatening to shut them down again over unpaid bills. The supporters' trust saved them this time, but they had to sell the ground to the local university to do so. Now between then and the takeover, Wrexham had been a well-run, enthusiastically supported but unlucky fifth-tier team. Pipped to promotion in 2012 by Jamie Vardy's goals for Fleetwood Town, they've been back to the playoffs two more times after the 2011-12 campaign and come up short, not quite making it back to the Football League. But McElhenney was on a mission. He told Kerr that he had just read an article about an investment bank called Inner Circle Sports, who had helped Fenway Sports Group buy Liverpool and Michael Eisner purchase Portsmouth. And introductions were made with the Wrexham Supporters Trust by Inner Circle's friends at Portsmouth, and talks began. Trust member and former Wrexham director Spencer Harris told McElhenney and Kerr about how Wales was split by the M4 motorway, with Cardiff, Newport County and Swansea below it, and only Wrexham above it. We're the club that represents half a nation. There are 750,000 people in North Wales and they want something that makes them feel proud of where they're from. And it was around this time that the conversation turned to sponsors and McElhenney told Kerr that he had emailed Reynolds about sponsoring the team, only for him to email back at 5.30am to say that he did not just want to back Wrexham, he wanted to buy them. This was a new level, says Kerr. Rob is very well respected in our industry, but he's not a superstar. Ryan is, and I knew that this would put us on the front pages and talk shows around the world. In Rob and Ryan, we have a unique advantage. Until Hugh Jackman decides to buy Bath City, we've got the field to ourselves in terms of non-league clubs with weird and wonderful owners. The fact that Rob and Ryan are talking about Wrexham on The One Show in the UK and Jimmy Kimmel in the US has brought in global brands. Our shirt sponsorship has gone up by a multiple of 10. And the effect is obvious at the racecourse ground. The cop is now covered in a smart banner emblazoned with the club's new and old sponsors, the local firms that kept Wrexham afloat pre-transformation. 
Eiffel Williams trailers, already more famous for the exposure they got in R.R. McReynolds' announcement video than a season on Wrexham's shirt, is now on the shorts. Wrexham Lager has moved from there to a stand, and in their places are TikTok, Expedia and Aviation Gin. And there's been a similar upgrade to the squad, with Paul Mullin, last season's League 2 Player of the Year, leading a haul of League 1 quality talent this summer. Also now in the side are Ben Toza, a £200,000 arrival from Cheltenham Town, James Jones, a Scottish under-21 international, and one of Carlisle United's best players last year in League 2, Aaron Hayden. All have been given three-year contracts. So Kerr is pragmatic about how Wrexham's future might be viewed. If people want to call us the Manchester City of the National League, so be it. But it's not really true. Like City, we were a big club waiting for some love. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic brings you the best sports journalism in the world in a personalised experience, connecting you with the stories and teams that you care about the most. There's coverage of 13 sports, plus direct access to world-class journalists through live Q&As, discussions and podcasts. Not to mention, it's all ad-free. And you can try it now for free for 30 days by clicking the link in the description.